Hello comic fans, here's Al Grey. Some videos ago I did an overview about uh, art books by European cartoonists and got a lot of requests uh, since then to uh, delve a bit deeper into this particular tome here. A mirage with art, sketches, layouts and stuff by um, the Belgian Will. And I will totally do so, no pun intended today with this video but uh, first I want to talk about his comics of course uh, a lot of the stuff that is in these books here is uh, in this book as well in yeah in preparation in form of preparation sketches and and stuff so but now talk about uh, these comics here and starting with my favorite uh, comic by will by far my favorite comic by him it's the 27th letter and um, this seems to be a, my, maybe a bit a cliched story about the 20s and the 30s, but it has in many aspects a very original and gripping um, view on, on histor the history back then. Uh, the 27th uh, letter of the title is uh, the swastika who changed everything um, in my country here for the worst, of course. And... Um, we have this little boy here uh, raised in uh, Berlin at in the end of the 20s by prostitutes and yeah how he was raised and uh, under these circumstances uh, in this bordello right there and um, experiencing his first love and uh, how he uh, ran into the Nazi regime and it's um, it's fantastic clearly uh, told even though it's cliche it has very well-known tropes if you watched movies or stuff read stuff uh, about these times here but uh, to squeeze in as much as emotion uh, beauty um, just philosophy, poetry, and damn fant uh, fantastic art uh, by Will into just one uh, European album. It's, uh, it's just great. I won't uh, spoil you the end, but uh, you, will, you will be blown away by, by this book here, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, Given that you you can take uh, some of these old school tropes uh, that will uh, uses, he, he definitely uh, sounds like uh, and and this back uh, they sound like an author from decades ago. Uh, but I really like this um, yeah distance. Uh, it's not. It's not a modern story, but it's a true story, and it's uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic stuff here. And we have uh, the Garden of Delights. Um, <laughs> what I said before about this book here being uh, told from uh, a very uh, a perspective and in a way that is not modern anymore, by no means. This is true for this especially because uh, we can see here the yeah the life story of one dandy bohemian who is rich beyond measures and uh, has a very superficial um, idea of his dream uh, woman and chases this uh, idea for his life and very telling a story here is that he uh, has, it's a circle of short stories if you will and, um, <laughs> and he learns to play the the, the, the piano the piano of, of the uh, women's body um, if you <laughs> it's a pretty telling uh, panel right there um, but his love of his life is some kind of painting and he wait find this here yeah 
uh, there she hangs on the wall. But he only has to clap in his hands uh, to make her alive again and vice versa. So when he claps in his hand, she's just a beautiful woman hanging on his wall. And uh, whenever he feels the need to make love to her beautiful body, um, then he can clap again in his hands and she will reappear. And so this is really a parody of a certain um, yeah, um, machism, if you will. And even though it seems to celebrate this uh, lifestyle, um, if you will, it is uh, certainly for good measures a parody and a satirical take on, on this um, as well. But Will is maybe um, most known for his series uh, Harry and ah, Harry und Platte. It's called in Germany Tiff et Tondue. It's called in France and Belgium. Um, and it was conceived for the Belgian uh, comic magazine uh, uh, du, uh, Spirou, of course, uh, by Dupuis. And here are these collected editions. Uh, this is the first one. No, this is the first one. This is the second. And oh. hey, <laughs> this is the third. And this is not by Will. So yeah, this is by uh, includes comics by a different uh, cartoonist who was not really uh, a fan favorite, and I really can see why. Um, so let's take a little look into this book here. Uh, this is the most recent one, but uh, the next uh, volume will appear at the end, end of the month here. Um, these are really kids comics and we have these bit blunt uh, characters only um, uh, separated by the hairstyle and hairy and platter, which means bold head. Uh, uh, same with Tiffy Tondu in French. So these are their most uh, outstanding features. Uh, otherwise, they are pretty, um, yeah, empty characters, vessels uh, to transport us through these stories. Um, the most uh, significant, outstanding character of all these stories is the villain named Shock. Um, but. What really is fun with these stories, uh, despite of being really um, yeah, simple, straightforward, uh, nice stories, it's that they're simple, straightforward, nice stories. And uh, with a really, yeah, it's just if you if you like this uh, art or these this kind of um, cartooning. Uh, <clears throat> old-fashioned cartooning uh, with uh, nice overseeable plots with a villain that just can't be uh, uh, be killed. He will reappear in each uh, album for sure. So no dead bodies involved for the most part at least and uh, with a very nice 60s, 50s vibe to them. Um, I really like these uh, stories, but if you're more for um, adult interesting stories, uh, hunt down one of these two here, uh, the 27th uh, Letter and the Garden of Delight. Um, I know a comic crack uh, somewhere along the lines uh, picked up uh, this book here, so it has to be available in English, but I can't remember by which publisher. So now to this book here. Uh, I guess uh, a lot of you were uh, titillated in a way by this beautiful uh, cover here. Um, and yeah, as I promised, I this time I will take my time here to uh, really give you an impression of this book here and um, Will's beautiful art. So here, just the inside cover with the pencil drawing by uh, the villain of um, Tiff et du Shock, sitting there on his desk. 
tells a lot about the mastery of um, will creating space within just one panel. And here's uh, the other thing he's obviously strong at uh, in drawing beautiful women. And here with the brush and a very art, uh, artsy manner. Will had uh, actually, I will think of Will in, in that he lived four lives. Uh, one as the cartoonist of these um, kids' story, or for, for uh, this child-friendly uh, comic magazine, Spirou. Then his um, with a more flat coloring and stuff. And then he has uh, graphic novels in European album format. Uh, and uh, the painter of these paintings here that I will show you um in some minutes and uh then he was um the um designer for the um uh, uh for tintin the other magazine uh and so he worked there as an art director and wanted to uh, use the qualities uh, of a Playboy magazine of all uh, journals, but uh, this was his comparison and he wanted to um, use the same quality, the same spirit uh, for this uh, kids magazine. Here we have him in a bathrobe. This is a self-portrait. By the way, uh, if you see his signature Maltite, or however you pronounce it, Will Maltite, that's his actual name. Uh, but his comic stuff he uh, signed with uh, Will. This is a pretty telling uh, page here, uh, this couple here and this little boy. I don't know what he uh, intends to do there, this uh, little penciled boy right there. But it's, it, I feel uh, it's some kind of self-portrait or will as well. Uh, always the, being the little boy who likes to uh, lift up uh, the skirt or to show the beauty of women uh, or to look at uh, this here. And here, beautiful pencil drawing or maybe this is this is one what a beautiful portrait of this woman there. these intense colors. yeah, he did cartoons. maybe this is even the fifth uh, life of will. Here we have a beautiful double page out of Tiff et Fondue and what uh, makes this one here extra interesting is of course this panel here uh, which he painted in with watercolors and look how beautiful this looks especially with all these black and white panels around. Um, and you have this here all over this book here that you can marvel at uh, these original colorings by Will. You have a lot of these commentaries and stuff and even though these drawings, I guess, are uh, for the most part not in their original size here. It has for sure this artist edition feel here. Um, have I mentioned it? This book here is by the Paris-based gallery Daniel Magin. They have lots of other stuff, uh, fantastic stuff. And uh, if you don't mind, as myself, uh, that the text here is in French and of course uh, in the speech bubbles as well and if you just want to look like me uh, just at the art um, 
it's uh, look at all their offerings, uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, or uh, look at my um, video in which I showed you uh, the other um, art books uh, with art by TB and, and uh, others. Uh, TB is another guy that I want to delve a bit deeper and to showcase his book here. And Shock once again, who was some kind, uh, somehow the breakthrough in uh, main, Belgian mainstream comics uh, back in the day. Beautiful modern art architecture, nature, and uh, nice cars with the shock in him. A good summary for, and somehow this. Um, yeah, uh, classic modern art feel uh, that uh, he, that uh, Will's art, uh, that Will's cartooning is drenched in. So let's go through the Tiffany Tondu stuff here. And then he had a, an episode when he went to Tintin. And here you can see, uh, yeah, Moi, uh, je, je voulais faire uh, Tintin comme Playboy. playboy. Uh, I wanted to do Tintin as a Playboy. And um, you can say about Playboy what, uh, whatever you want, but uh, the old magazines really have a nice feel to them and, uh, uh, and art, um, uh, the art style is pretty nice and, and was, I guess. And um, so you can see here uh, Will's layouts for this uh, Tintin magazine, which was obviously aimed at kids. Look at this painting here. Then he went back to uh, Tiff et Hondu. And here are some of my favorite stories so far. As I said, it, uh, the collected edition is not concluded yet. Some loser pencils here and some ad for TV Tondu. There's a lot of playfulness uh, with these characters because they are so simple and uh, yeah, empty in a way. Uh, I actually I like to to see them as a gay couple because they live together and they share every meal together. So why uh, they shouldn't be gay? But uh, maybe this was this just ca didn't came to anybody's mind back then. But today you can read this really into these stories. Uh, without changing anything of, of the narrative. They are just uh, an adventurous, uh, nice couple. And uh, experiencing together with the reader um, these hilarious adventures. So maybe let's go to the part after. Hilarious adventures, as I said it. Um, okay. No. Even in these stories, he uh, managed to squeeze in some beautiful women. So, what's this here? Illustrations. Um, I guess for Spirou, yeah, for different Sp uh, Spirou publications here, Spirou Junior, you really can see that this is uh, published from the original design or painting. Wonderful stuff that uh, transport me right there into 
uh, my early childhood, um, I'm pretty sure that somewhere along the line I read something, some kid's book by illustrated by Will. And especially uh, this character here, Isabel, one of the rare instances when a, a girl uh, took over the leading part, was the main character in a comic. And uh, you have her right there on, on the title page. Um, I don't have any comic by Isabel anymore. I don't know where they went. But I'm sure I've uh, I've read um, a good handful of these stories here. Can't remember this beautiful witch lady there, uh, which is in many ways uh, pretty typical for Will as well. But look at this here. this. Yeah, I'm pretty speechless and I'm still in uh, exploring this book here um, because you can't uh, I can't really digest uh, with um, one reading or flipping through these pages all the beauty that is in this book here and I realize right now that I yeah will uh, upload this video as it is right here uh, there's no sense in editing out some pages because yeah Please tell me which uh, panel is more beautiful than the other here. <laughs> Look at this mad guy there in his flying contraption. Hey, I really would like to have this here as a poster. So, but we're right there in the book, so it will, we have a lot of stuff here still to look at. And, um, another illustration taken out of Isabel, Isabel. And, uh, do you know what? I really have to hunt down these comics here can't remember seeing them translated into German for a while now, but they have to be somewhere. Um, and knowing my luck, when I hunted them down in, uh, in some destroyed, uh, loose uh, kind of an album or something like that, uh, then some publisher will come along and do a fancy a new collected edition of the stuff here. But anyhow, this is nice. And it's always amazing <laughs> what kind of art you can do back in the day. Uh, uh, for um, kids magazines. Um, so when then we have uh, stuff that wasn't published in Spiru, I guess. No, Record e Veronique was, I guess, a series uh, for Tintin, the concurrent, uh, the arch enemy of Spiru. I can be wrong. But this seems to be more of the Tiffy Tondu type of stuff, adventures. 
and uh, of course this has the imprint of the 50s illustration on it there was always something tempting of this uh, nice amalgamation or blending of um, modern art let's say Mondrian with uh, cute uh, illustrations uh, more or less cute illustrations um, So here we have illustrations for the Garden of Delight, of course, and some pencils for that story. Um, some of them uh, were already published in that album that I've shown you before. But most of them, of course, not. And here you can see his beautiful watercolors uh, in an e even better printing quality. Even though I think uh, these old uh, albums really hold up pretty well. So yeah, we have these adventures or misadventures of our dandy bohemian and some kind of... Uh, um, photo uh, album of his uh, adventures and life. So, and here we have a pretty important set section, the beauties of Will by Will, collecting a lot of his um, drawings of women, or paintings um, as well. wonderful elegant line uh, and uh, really there's one take and it sits a uh, kind of way you you don't have the impression that uh, he needed much more time than let's say 10 or 15 minutes for one of these drawings here but hey what a beauty they are <laughs> in each way uh, in each sense Another int very interesting take here to use the coloring just for the lady and leave everything else in black and white. So just focus on the uh, main attraction there. And they use different paper for different uh, chapters in this book here, which is always a good sign that they really think about uh, all the everything that is involved in making this book here. Here's the cover for the 27th let, um, letter, the original watercolor. Yep, so. Yeah, you wanted a thorough look into the book and you will get one. So don't complain that we're almost at minute 30 right now. But last chapter in this book here, and this will conclude my uh, not so short overview here, are his paintings. Some of his paintings. And yeah, they border sometimes a bit on the kitschy side of things, uh, to be honest with you. But um, if this is kitsch, I do like kitsch. And um, it's a bit uh, like uh, Modigliani in, yeah, a cross between Modigliani and um, a bit more popular take on 
painting beautiful women here or Matisse or that's mm, uh, definitely inspired or influenced uh, very heavily by some Fauvists and uh, French painters of the time or Keith Van Dongen or so. So yeah. And overall, this book here, as you have seen it, uh, is a fantastic overview about the different aspects and sides of the wonderful artist uh, that Will was, Will Maltet. And uh, yeah, you have his creations and some kind of overview, and there him working at his desk. So, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.